Hello, Pray and Share Warriors. I hope that you had an awesome Monday. I did. I got caught up on some things that I didn't do last week. Kind of taking a couple of days off. Um, and just... Sorry, I lost my stuff that I had already put up. Um, anyway, I took a couple of days off. I've had some sad days. Um, my family, friend, my brother-in-law's brother passed away. And so it's just been kind of a sad time. I spent last night with my, um, friend, sister from high school, going through pictures, sending pictures back and forth, and that was kind of nice to remember some of those memories. But anyway, um, I am back tonight to do Psalm 42. And, um, hey, Ashton. Happy birthday, Ashton. Ashton's here. Isn't today your birthday? Anyway, Ashton's in our youth group. Um, anyway, I thought I would do Psalm 42. I don't know if I'm going to read anything else tonight. Still kind of, um, processing the passing of, um, this dear friend from high school. Are you having a good day, Ashton? Birthdays are so fun. Anyway, um, I was going to read what I wrote this morning and read Psalm 42 and probably get off of here because that's great. I'm glad that you are having a good day. Oh, my fan just fell. All right, I'm a little bit out of sorts tonight. But anyway, we're going to get through it. Well, let's uh, let's pray first, and then we'll read Psalm 42, and I'll read. Well, I think I'll read to you what I wrote this morning, because I was talking about what happened in Houston this weekend, which was very tragic for um, many. There were many injured and eight fatalities at that concert. And I just wanted to share, you know, uh, listen to a lot of the testimonies of the people that went and how they felt about it. And I wanted to share that too. But let's go ahead and pray first. God, we just come to you and we thank you, God. We thank you that um, you are on your throne and you are in control, God. You are the great Jehovah. You are the great I am. You are from everlasting to everlasting, God. You have always been and you will always be. God, thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector. Thank you for being our shelter in the storm. Thank you for being our strength and our refuge. God, you are mighty and miraculous and powerful, God. And you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness according to your truths, God, not, not the truths of the world, according to your truth. And God, we just, um, you are caring and kind and compassionate and loving. You are faithful. You are trustworthy, God, and you are patient. You want none to perish. Thank you for calling us as your children. Thank you for loving us. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears and their hearts to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. And we pray for the prodigals. We just pray for the prodigals to remember the relationship that they had with you and to return and to repent and to be reconciled. God, we do lift up all these people that were involved in this tragedy. 
this weekend, God, I believe it was Friday night, this um, <clears throat> Astro World concert, God, with Travis Scott. We just pray for the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray, God, for peace, comfort, and strength for them. We pray for all the injured, God, that they would be healed. And we pray um, emotionally, God, this really did touch a lot of people that were there emotionally. We pray for emotional healing, God. We pray for physical healing if they were injured. And we just pray, God, that in some way, maybe this incident um, would draw them to you and would draw them to the truth. And God, we just... Um, we pray for all the disasters that are going on all over the world, God. We just pray that these people's needs would be met. The people on the Canary Ant, uh, Islands, God, uh, Volcano, La Palma, God, we just pray for all these people. That their needs would be met, God, that they would be met by the hands and feet of Jesus and the loving compassion of Jesus. We pray for... Um, I pray for our family, God, during this loss of, of John Mark, our, our friend, our family member. God, I've, I've known him for so long, and we're going to miss him. But, God, we know where he is, and we know that we will see him again. So I just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for every one of us, God, especially his wife, especially his daughter, especially his other daughters, God, and all their children. I pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. And God, we just, uh, we also pray for people that are sick. We just pray for healing for them and strength for their families. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now well, that, that was a long prayer. I lost my friend Ashton in the prayer. Um, anyway, those are some of the things that, um, are on my heart tonight. So we're going to read Psalm 42. And as I discovered in reading the study part, that Psalms is actually split up in different books. And I never knew that. I was going to look in my other Bible and see. So like, chapter 1 through 41 was book 1. And so, I was going to see if King David, it doesn't look like a, a lot of, maybe that ended some of David's psalms, but I know that he wrote more than that, and I know that there are more, but I want to read to you first what I wrote this morning, and um, this song is really old. But it's really a good song. It's called We Are One in the Spirit. And um, Sean Foyt was singing it. And I really, I really was enjoying listening to it because I kind of woke up with that feeling of we've got to unite as Christians. We've got to unite, you know, no matter what denomination you go to, no matter what um, no matter what, we've got to unite because we are one in the spirit. We are one in the spirit. So this song and message is what I feel so strongly today. I haven't heard it in a while, but the message is still the same now as when it was written. I have heard many people sing this in the past, and I have. I've, I've even heard for King and Country sing this song. Um, I like the way Sean Foyt started this out. He was talking about the church and how we had to unite. And he even uh, mentioned a scripture that I put in here too. So if we are going to survive this time we find ourselves in, we are going to have to unite as Christians against the evil that is going on around us. 
the incident in Houston this weekend breaks my heart. It really did. It broke my heart. I am praying for all these concert goers that um, were affected by what many of them describe as a demonic experience. Many of these people said that this was very demonic, that they liked this artist, but this concert was very demonically charged. And uh, many describing it as a concert in hell because they were all packed together. Like the whole crowd of 50,000 was packed like this. Like you couldn't even breathe. So whichever way they decided to move, that's the way you were moving. And they were pushing towards the stage too all the time. And so whoever was at the very front, they didn't have much of a chance. So many saying 50,000 people were packed in like sardines. Their testimonies are heart-wrenching. They are. Our enemy wants the children, youth, and young adults for himself. Satan wants these younger generations. He wants them. Jesus does too. We must protect them. It is our job to protect them. As parents, as Christians, this is our job. This is the job that God has given us, is to protect our children, to protect their eyes, to protect their ears, to protect their hearts. So that means that things that are not good don't need to be, they don't need to be seeing it, they don't need to be hearing it, they don't need to be putting it in their heart. And as parents, I think we all fail in those areas. Um, I am praying for all these people affected by this incident, especially parents and family friends that lost people due to this concert and all those that responded to help. There were lots, law enforcement, first responders. Some people in the crowd started helping people. I mean, people were passing out because they couldn't breathe. Some people were having heart attacks. There were drugs involved. There were drugs that were being injected into people. Uh, many people had to be revived with Narcan. Many people didn't make it. Like eight did not make it at all. Um, like I said, many of them united to help others. But many were just trampling people to get out. So many people, it was like fight or flight, and they were like out of there. They were trampling people that had fallen on the ground to get out. Um, we are one in the spirit, and we must unite against the evil spirits of this world. And there are many evil spirits of this world. There is a spirit of confusion that has hit our children. And I believe indoctrinated from adults, maybe not parents, but other adults of influence. Um, In heaven, there will be no denominational walls, no separations of color, no separations of gender, no age separation, no political separation, absolutely no separations at all. We will be all, we will be all one in spirit, in perfect peace, love, and unity. Until then, we must unite as one spiritually here. I believe this is what God is moving his church to do, to unite under the banner of love of Jesus. The Let Us Worship movement, when they were told that they could not have church anymore, they left their church and they have been going all over the United States 
And right now, Sean Foyt is with his family in Iraq ministering to widows and orphans from the Iraq war. So his church has left the building. Sometimes we're going to have to leave our buildings in order to minister to others. Um, I love going to Christian concerts. And to me, it is the closest thing to heavenly worship that I have ever experienced here on earth. When that music dies down and everybody is singing in one accord, praising the name of Jesus or praising the name of God or lifting up the Holy Spirit, there's just nothing like it for me. For me, I love that experience. But I have never experienced anything like the crowd on Friday night in Houston. Thank goodness, I have never. And I've been. I've been in some big crowds. I've been in some over 100,000 crowds at AT&T Stadium. At Harvest America, I went twice. And everybody got in and out in an orderly fashion. Now, everybody wasn't in one spot either. I think that was their problem was that everyone was in, in, the, in the same spot. There was no seating. There was no separation. Everyone was in the same spot. All 50,000. I think they're going to find out that more than 50,000 went because they were encouraging people to come whether they had bought a ticket or not. And so I know that some people did that. So Jesus said in John 17, 21, make them one, that they all may be one as thou father art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And that was John 17, 21. So make us one. Make us one. Let us unite. Let us be in one accord. Let us protect the children and the innocent younger generations. They need our protection. They need to know that Jesus loves them and that Jesus wants them. Many of the younger generation don't even feel wanted. They need to know that Jesus wants them. Jesus has a place for them in his kingdom. Jesus wants to be their shepherd. Jesus wants to tend to them. If they don't feel like anybody else wants to take care of them, Jesus wants to do that. He wants to be their shepherd. Okay, well, let's read. Let's see what Psalm 42 is about. Because I don't think that King David wrote it. Yearning for God in the midst of distresses. To the chief musician, a contemplation of the sons of Korah. As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night. While they continually say to me, where is your God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul within me. For I used to go with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God. With a voice of joy and praise. With a multitude that kept a pilgrim feast. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. O oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan and from the heights of Hermon, from the hill Mizar. Deep calls into deep at the noise of your waterfalls. 
All your waves and billows have gone over me. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night, his song shall be with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I will say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a breaking of my bones, my enemies reproach me. While they say to me all day long, where is your God? Why are you cast down on my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. So this is kind of a, I don't know, kind of a sad psalm where the psalmist is crying out to God, but maybe not feeling heard. But knowing, knowing who, he, who God is and that God has gotten him through before. You know, he will praise him. He's been to the house of God with the multitude. He's calling him the rock. Why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? You know, sometimes we feel like we're alone, but we really aren't. And those are the times that we really need to cry out to God. Be honest with God. Because God knows if you're sad, if you're mad, if you're hurt, whatever your emotions are, God already knows about them but express them to him and he will comfort you and he will encourage you and he will um, tell you that it's okay. But he wants us to come to him like children. He wants us to do like your kids do, raising their arms up at you. Pick me up, pick me up. He wants us to do that. We are his children, and he wants us to act like his children. So this is what the study part says of this. The, this poet felt that God was remote and distant. He express, expressed his deep longing for God as being comparable to the intense thirst of a deer for water during a time of severe drought. The poet longed to enjoy once more the assurance of God's presence with him. All who belong to God experience times when God seems absent, and they long for the reassurance of his presence. Oh, well, that was it. Psalms 42 and 43 provide guidance in such times. So sometimes it does feel like God is not there. I think those are the times that we go to him and we are honest with him and we lay out all of our feelings in front of him because he has the answers. He knows all the details. He knows all the solutions, and he already knows the outcomes of anything that we're going through, anything that we're dealing with. He already knows. So sometimes we just need to be transparent before him and let him know what our concerns are. Let him know how we're feeling. And he will draw closer to us. Sometimes we don't feel close to God because we have drawn away from him. And we are going our own way and we're doing our own thing. And we're like, life is good. Um, I got this thing called life. It's okay. But you know what? We really don't. And we really do need God every day. We need Jesus. We need that shepherd to guide us, to protect us, to 
to lead us to water, you know, as the deer. Need that. And we need the Holy Spirit to guide us. We need uh, <clears throat> we need a good oh I'm sorry. <clears throat> we need that good spirit <clears throat> within us so we can combat the other spirits out there that are not good or evil. I think what those kids experienced, what those young adults experienced was pure evil. And I think it blew some of their minds because I don't think that they had really seen that through the music, but this was new music. He said, I'm releasing some new music. So anyway, if you're a parent, protect your kids. Look at their phones, see what they're listening to, see who they're talking to, you know, protect them. That's our job. And we are accountable to God for that job. We are. He put us in charge. He gave us the job of protecting our children. And we need to do just that. Okay, I think I'm going to do this bracelet tonight for the salvation message. I don't know if it has anything to do with Psalm 42. We shall see. All right, our first collar that we start with is gold. It's really hard to get. Okay, there we are. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes. Romans 1.16 so the gold color represents God, the creator of all who lives in heaven. The Bible says that God is light and in him there is no darkness. God is perfect. God loves you and he wants to have a personal relationship with you. Jesus is God's son. The Bible says that Jesus and God are one. Uh, Jesus said that in John 17. We just read that. The dark color represents sin which is doing wrong things. God says that all have sinned and fall short of God's standard of perfection. Sin separates us from God. The Bible says that the penalty for our sin is death or separation from God forever. The first question Mark is asking, how can your sins be removed so that you can know God? The red color represents Jesus' blood. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life, but he died on a cross to pay the penalty for all of our sin. Again, the payment for sin is death. So Jesus paid the penalty for each of us. Why? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life with God. The good news is that you don't have to be separated from God forever by sin. So the white color represents each of us after our sins are washed away by Jesus. How can Jesus wash away our sins? wash our sins away. When we believe in Jesus by following him, our sins are forgiven. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. So this question Mark is asking, have you accepted Jesus' gift of forgiveness by believing in him? So let's pray. God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sins and that you raised Jesus from the dead.
I now put my faith only in Jesus to forgive me and save me from my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So the green color represents growth in your relationship with God. These symbols show the areas of growth. The greatest commandment is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and that we love our neighbors as ourselves. Love God, love people. So the next symbol is read the Bible each day to learn more about God and his love. The next one is the little praying guy. Pray to God constantly and share your thoughts, needs, and desires with Him. When we are baptized, the next thing is the water. When we are baptized, we are telling the world that we have committed our lives to Jesus and that we are a new person, like being born all over again. And then we have the handshake. Hang out with other Christians and encourage each other. Church is a good place to start. Share the good news that Jesus can forgive sins when you trust in him. Tell as many people as you can. All right. So if you uh, said that prayer, welcome to the kingdom family of God. Excuse me. I'm going to shut the door. I'll be right back. Okay, my husband came in and he's on the phone. That's a loud phone call every night. Okay, so um, anyway, if you did invite Jesus into your heart, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is now being written in the Lamb's Book of Life and the angels are rejoicing. Um, you are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus Christ, his son. Okay, so as this little thing said, if you will read your Bible, start in Matthew, learn more about Jesus, learn more about the Savior that gave his life for you, and uh, pray, pray to God every day, I pray twice as an example here, you don't have to do anything as um, complicated as I do, uh, you can do something very simple. Just talk to God every day. Find some praise and worship music and praise God every day too. It will help you get through the things of life. Prayer and praise will, being thankful, being grateful. Those will help you grow in your Christianity. Those things will help you grow in your Christianity. Okay, well, I'm going to do the um, blessing from God. I'm sorry I'm a little out of sorts tonight. I just, I don't know. Uh, Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. It is time to pray again. I'm just going to do a blanket prayer and get off of here. i got to go fix Seth something to eat. God, we just thank you. We thank you for this time that we can read your word. God, we thank you that you care about us. Even when we feel like you are distant and we feel alone, God, you do care about us. And you are always there. You never leave us, God. Sometimes we step away from you, but you're always waiting for us to come back, God. So if anybody in here 
that has come to listen to this has stepped away, just um, draw them back to you, God, please. God, we just praise you for your protection, for your provision, for your blessings, for your guidance and your wisdom every day, God. Give us boldness to share your truth and to share the gospel of Jesus. I pray for all of my friends and family members, God, and for their families, for you to bless them abundantly, God. I do pray for um, everyone that has lost loved ones, God. I pray for these people, these families from Houston, God, that were involved in that, these friends. Their lives are changed forever, God. I just pray that you would draw them to you and that um, you would send people that would minister to them. What a, a tragic, horrific experience that they had, God, that for many of them changed their lives forever. God, we just... Uh, just praise you and thank you, God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, we'll pray and share, warriors. I think Ashton took off when I prayed, but today's Ashton's birthday. And he's a very special young man in our youth group. And uh, sometimes he comes to see me. My friend Josie, she works really late now, and she puts in a lot of hours, so I don't hardly ever see her either. But it's okay. I don't know who listens to this. I don't know who the message is for. I just know that God wants me to be consistent in sharing. And so um, have an awesome rest of your night, an awesome tomorrow, which is Tuesday, and much love. And cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.